Number 9, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning. This movie was the last of the direct-to-video Disney sequels, and I wish it wasn't, because there's another that's more worthy of being the last. But I'll get to that one later this month. Funnily enough, just like Return of Jafar and The Land and the King of Thieves, this movie has a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. And this movie was the beginning of Ariel, and the end of the direct-to-video Disney movies. Like how Return of Jafar was the beginning of the Aladdin animated series, and Aladdin and the King of Thieves was the end of it. Probably coincidence. The movie is a prequel to the original movie, just like the TV series was. But this movie contradicts some of the TV series' continuity, such as Ariel meeting Flounder for the first time here instead of as a kid before the series. Here, King Triton has banned music from under the sea, because the music box that he gave his wife caused her to get captured by fishermen, never to be seen again. Ariel, being the rebel that she is, tries to bring music back to the land, while trying to deal with the plot of the villainous Marina Del Rey, wanting to replace Sebastian as the attaché of Triton, or however attaché is pronounced. Let me be real with you for a bit. Ever since I watched the Spongebob episode Clash of Triton, I never really could trust anyone with the name Triton. And this version of Triton from the Little Mermaid franchise has done nothing to change my mind about that determination. I never cared for the Little Mermaid, mostly because of the animated series. But to me, this movie was a few points off of being on par with the original movie. One of the biggest complaints I've heard about this movie is was about a specific scene using generic movie editor transitions such as wipes. My main problem with this movie is that it did nothing to set up the events for the original movie like most prequels are supposed to do. And on top of all of it, it didn't even take into account the TV series' continuity. Even Sonic the Hedgehog does a better job of keeping its continuity straight. Did the writers of this movie even watch the series? Or did they only watch the two movies of this franchise, got told to make a prequel, and went with something the target audience would eat up? While this prequel has bark and bite, the next sequel I'm about to talk about has more bark than bite. 